So what I want to do real quick is yeah. uh, help people understand conceptually how uh, a decentralized uh, storage network works. And uh, in order to do that, um, maybe we can take two seconds and just describe a data center. And so for those that don't know, uh, there are massive computing facilities all over the world. Uh, these facilities basically build um, you know, the physical structure. They put computers, they put storage uh, hardware uh, in those facilities, and then they have sales forces that try to go out and get customers. And so right. that model um, is can be very profitable if done well. Uh, but just like any business, uh, when you go to the convenience store, uh, you don't have everyone buying all of the products in the convenience store at all times. So there's things that are sitting idle, or in this world, uh, it is computing power or storage that is unused. And so this idea of a decentralized uh, storage network is basically uh, Ben, the team at storage has come up with an incentive mechanism to get the unused storage to come up for availability through a, a digital means. And then people who need storage can go in and basically purchase some of the unused storage at a high level, accurate. And you're, you're the expert yeah. here, but is that direction? No, no, no. I mean, at a high level, you're really accurate. You know, the only, the only thing I think I, I would uh, sort of uh, clarify is that the drives that you're using aren't necessarily in uh, in the data center. Right? So we've got, we've got some people who have you know, we've got companies who have data centers, we've got universities who have data centers. Uh, you've also got lots of individuals who are running computers in their basements. Um, and all of those, you know, people in rural parts of the world that have, you know, have a, have a disk drive, right? All of those can be part of our storage network, and they all are. Right? So we've got um, something like 10,000 drives all around the world, or 10,000 people all around the world operating drives in like 85 countries. Um, and, you know, collectively, they've, in a pretty massive storage network, and uh, if you are storing a data with us, instead of us storing it on you know one drive that we control, we sort of split it up into pieces and we run it across large numbers of drives run by lots of different people all over the world. That not only good economically, it also turns out to be really good for privacy, for cost, for performance. And so, the customer experience, from what I understand, is almost identical to what you would do with a centralized service, right? You go to a website, you say, hey, I need to spin up some storage. You basically purchase that. And uh, what happens from that point through a centralized and a decentralized service is different, but right. for the customer, um, it, it's pretty much exactly the same. Yeah, I mean, that was our intent. Our intent was to say that for, for, for our customers are concerned, we should just be a really fast, really secure, really cheap, um, uh, um, really useful way of doing storage that doesn't require them to change the way that they operate. So we've got, you know, we've got lots of people doing cool decentralized apps on us. We also have, you know, massive numbers of people who are doing traditional apps on us that just happen to be doing it now that decentralized way. Got it. And so then what is the economic benefit? Because that's ultimately the people who have this unused storage and they're kind of offering it up. I, I love the example of Airbnb. These are the people who have a home and they want somebody to come stay in it, right? right, right, exactly uh, right. Talk about kind of the economic uh, difference. Obviously, you're competing with zero, right? So they get nothing for their unused stuff without you. Right. How, how much can they make, or or how does that work from uh fr from sure. if um you you actually send them somebody to uh, to use as a customer? Sure, sure. So basically, uh, what uh if, if you're a, a storage node operator or a we call them a node, storage node operator, um, you basically you know download some code onto your onto your drive, if you will. Um, and for the most part, stuff happens in the background. You don't even have to pay attention, right? Um, uh, and again, you're not spending additional money on power or equipment or people to do this. Um, what we do as our economic model is we quote prices to our customers. And um, in essence, about 60% of what we make from our customers goes back to the network. And so as a storage node operator, we quote you a price based off of how much data you're storing and how much data you're serving up. Um, and you know, depending on the size of your, <coughs> excuse me, Size of your drive and how much you're storing, um, you know, you can make five, ten dollars a month per drive, right? Um, so it's not, you know, it's not a, a standalone business like being a miner, um, but for many people, it's a great way of monetizing their energy capacity. Um, and unlike being a miner, it doesn't take a lot of power, it doesn't take a lot of effort, it doesn't. You know, we we design this so that it's it doesn't take specialized equipment to do. Um, but this is an incentive model for Excuse me for the for the rest of us, right? Um, and so as a result, we we've got a really broad group of, of storage node operators who are 
happily being part of this. And of course, we, we compensate them in our token, which is uh, STOR change. And so this is something that can be spun up pretty quickly, right? If I have unused storage and I can actually spin it down as well, let's say if I need the storage or something like that also, yeah, right? that's, it's that's, pretty that's responsive. Right. That's right. Yeah. So, so, um, you know, now, now your, your sort of your reputation, if you will, is based off of, uh, things like uptime, um, and, uh, how long you store. But if you are, let's say a data center that has equipment that sits idle for most of the year, but you need to reclaim it, uh, you know, around the holiday shopping season or something like that, that's fine. We have, we have ways for you to sort of tell us, Hey, I need to reclaim my space and you push the data to us and push it to other people. 